What's going on, everyone? Welcome into Falcons today. Hope you guys are having a good Friday. But it is time for one of the dumbest sports segments we all do. Don't lie. Even you that say you don't do this. We all look at the schedule and we prematurely hand out wins and losses despite having no idea who's even going to be playing. And I think what's even dumber than that is getting mad at prematurely handing out wins and losses like how dare you say the Falcons are going to lose week eight but at the same time I just want to say on the record record predictions are really stupid but I still don't like your record prediction so let's run through way too early record prediction first things first recapping the recently announced 2023 schedule Panthers to open up the season at home, followed up with the Packers coming to town, then two straight road games, Detroit, and then a trip across the pond to take on the London Jaguars. Week five, they got the Texans at home, no bye after London. Week six, the Commanders. Week seven, on the road to Tampa, followed up with a road trip to Nashville. Week nine, a home return to play Minnesota. And week 10, the Cardinals on the road, then the bye at week 11. Week 12, first matchup with the hated New Orleans Saints. Week 13, another road matchup this time in New York against the Jets. Week 14, home against the Bucks. Then another divisional showdown with the Panthers in week 15. Week 16, their last home game of the season, home against the Indianapolis Colts. And then two straight road matchups to close out the year, Chicago and New Orleans. So let's jump into our way too early record prediction, starting with a home win, a home win week one. I mean, every single person that is doing schedule and record predictions today, you're doing it wrong if you're having your team lose in week one. But in all honesty, I do believe the Falcons will beat the Panthers. The last first overall pick that was a quarterback to win in week one, 2002, David Carr. Since then, nine losses and a tie. So I'm not all that concerned about Bryce Young, who, by the way, I was watching some camp from his today in Charlotte. He looks like a mini Lego next to some of these offensive linemen. All right, week two, make it two straight wins, right? 2-0 and for the Falcons to start the year. I just want to say the Packers are going to suck this year. And the Falcons are going to somewhat expose that early on. So a nice early uh, start for Atlanta, 2-0 and out the gate. And then they got the Lions on the road in Week 3. I think this will be a loss, mostly because it has nothing really to do with Atlanta as much as Detroit is going to get a ship-pumping Week 1 in Kansas City. So they're going to need to rebound. And in Week 2 and Week 3, they might make some examples. And unfortunately for the Falcons, wrong time, wrong place. If this game was Week 14, they probably would have won. But because it's week three, it'll be a loss. Week four in London against the Jags. I'm going to go loss for this one. It used to be really easy to take down the Jags in London. Despite that being their second home, they had an atrocious record across the pond. But now the Jags are good. I said last year the Jags were my sleeper team. They made a run in the postseason. Now they go to London, and it's their second you know, home. They got two straight home games there, back-to-back -back weeks across the pond. So I think the Falcons, unfortunately, are going to fall short against the uh, London Jaguars. But let me know, are you excited for the London game? 9.30 Eastern time kickoff. That is AM. Y for yes or N for no if you are excited for a Falcons-London game. You got some pros and cons. You got to wake up early. You know, that's a bit of a bummer. But the pro is, I mean, that's a con, but the pro is if you win in London, the rest of your Sunday is gravy, right? You get to watch Red Zone stress-free. So I don't mind the London games. Uh, it's good rotation every couple of years. Week five, they come back from London after a loss. I think they pick up a win against the Texans. Houston's going to be better than I think people might think. And by better, I think they might be a three-win team instead of a two-win team. They should still be a very easy win for all th or all uh, 31 other teams. But the Falcons will not trip up against Houston. Week six at home, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm going to go with a loss to the Commanders. Not because I think Washington's going to be the secret dark horse team. But I just don't know if I'm ready to see Desmond Ritter start rattling off a bunch of early wins early on. So for that reason, maybe Sam Howell come into town and shock Atlanta. These two teams are on similar tiers. I think the Falcons are a better team. But it's a good reminder. It's the NFL. Any given Sunday. Week 7, they go down to Tampa. I don't know which quarterback they're facing. And by the way, at this point, the Falcons have played no real quarterbacks outside of Trevor Lawrence. But whether it's Baker or Kyle Trask, they'll be losing to Bijan and this offense. Week 8, road trip. Um, 
Well, no, yeah, we, the B. John Robinson will be beating the Bucks. That's okay. Producer Sam's a closet Bucks fan right now, and he's already getting pre mad. Week eight, Titans. I think it's going to be a loss. Um, I don't have a very good reasoning as to why this is going to be a loss, but I get major Mike Vrabel needs a statement win, and Atlanta, unfortunately, is a prime suspect for the Week 8 Tennessee Titans, probably at that point, like two or three wins in. Hot seat Braves. Okay, he cools everything down with a home win against the Falcons. So Arthur Smith's return to Nashville does not come with a win for him. I think the Titans might surprise Atlanta and win this matchup. Now, make sure to subscribe if you have not already. We keep you guys informed all offseason long. It is May 12th right now. Scheduled day was kind of the last big NFL, you know, calendar day until training camp opens up. So a lot of other spots are going to take their foot off the gas over the next two months or so. Not us. Producer Nick Roloff and I will keep you guys informed and entertained all offseason long. Moving on to week number nine, loss at home against Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. After Trevor Lawrence, this is probably going to be the best quarterback they will have faced up to this point. And I don't know if the defense is up to a Kirk Cousins noon, 1 p.m. slate. That's when he's at his best. If this was Sunday Night Football, easy win for Atlanta. All right, week 10, a road win against the Cardinals. Kyler Murray's probably not back at this point. I'm not going to bet on Colt McCoy over Bijan and this offense. Week 11, they get a bye before going back home and facing the New Orleans Saints. And after winning on the road, getting a bye, coming back home, yeah, it's a good ass-kicking for Derek Carr and the Saints. Followed up with a road loss to the Jets, unfortunately. Uh, I, I think New York's not going to be all that. But I think for Atlanta, they are not going to be a team that might rattle off a bunch of straight road wins. Uh, so for here, I've got them going for a loss against the Rodgers-led Jets. Now, we're going to talk more about that Saints matchup in just a second. But B. John Robinson jerseys are out. He is repping number seven. Pretty good running back number for him. I like this more for a quarterback. But get your B. John Robinson jerseys at chatsports.com slash Bijan ATL. I've got that link in the comments and the description of today's video. Now, going back to that Saints Falcons matchup, the first of the season in week 12. Our Saints guy here at Chat Sports, Trace Gerard, he was talking about the Saints roster today, and he was saying that this is a 11 win roster. And I looked at it, and it's maybe better than I kind of remembered it as, but I'm still not a big believer in Derek Carr. Alvin Kamara is going to miss the first six weeks of the season. Decent wide receiver with Chris Olave, but I'm not in on Michael Thomas. Offensive line is par for the course. And their defense lost a lot of guys to Atlanta. So I think Ryan Nielsen's going to have this offense figured out for New Orleans. Give me a Falcons win here in Week 12. Week 14, they sweep the Bucks without Tom Brady uh, to catapult themselves back in that playoff hunt. That's right where you want to be. Week 15, unfortunately, a road loss to Carolina. At this point, Bryce Young, he's got some games under his belt, and Atlanta might come up short in this one. Week 16, back home, home, a home finale, and it's a win over the Colts. I'm calling my shot right now. Indianapolis is going to be the worst team in football, I think, in 2023. If they're not the worst, they're the second worst. I have no faith in the Colts this year. Week 17 at Chicago. You wish you played the Bears in like week three, four, or five on the road. Week 17 by the lake that late in the year, that cold. I'm going to go with the hometown Bears. And week 18, unfortunately, to close out the year, a loss to the Saints. And what's a very Falcons fashion, right? Last five games of the season, you go two and three. You may have had a chance at making the playoffs last year, 7-10. and 10, They came up just short against the Saints at the end. Um, but once again, I think the Falcons drop the last two games of the year and unfortunately do not make a push for the postseason. So predict the Falcons record for me. I'm going to give you my record prediction in just a moment, but let me know what yours is down in the comments section. When it's all said and done, I've got Atlanta going 8-9. and nine. Very easy schedule, right? They can win a lot of games and maybe sneak into the postseason as one of those random, how do they make the playoff teams? Because they don't really play any tough teams, right? No Niners, no Eagles, no Chiefs, no Bengals, no Bills, no Ravens, no Browns, no real AFC or NFC competitors. So they could somehow get themselves to 9 or 10 wins, but last year, they won seven games. I think they're better, but I don't think they're dramatically better. And I don't know anything about Desmond Ritter, really, outside of four small game sample size. So I'm going to go with eight and nine. I know I'm going to get roasted for it, but hey, that's my honest prediction.